Next up, Desiree Kelly is taking classic portraiture up a notch. She puts her spin on her portraits, capturing the subject's essence by including artifacts and phrases in the backgrounds of her pieces. Take a look. I try to go beyond like the boundaries. I just want to speak really through my art. I find it really powerful to be able to tell a story visually without any words. My paintings are all about the subjects and it's all about telling their story and I want to tell it in a very vibrant, energetic way that people want to know about these people. So I've studied art and I wanted to make it more interesting. I came to the point where, where I was in college and I wanted to decorate my first apartment and I don't want to hang a flower on my wall. That's not the type of person I am and I wanted to make something that was just something you would never find it so I had to create it myself. So the subjects that I pick are people that I'm interested in and music is just always kept with me so you find a lot of musicians that I paint um, like Louis Armstrong, uh, Jimi Hendrix, and I just want to tell their personality, what I feel about them, because it is their portrait. Um, and I want to make it more interesting and uh, sort of tell their story. And that someone that, you know, is 10 years old can look at a piece that I create and learn a little bit of something by looking at the piece. The foundation is oil paint, spray paint, and collage. I have evolved to use other uh, mediums like uh, markers, acrylic paint. Um, it really depends on the subject and what I want to convey and how to do it. And there's some things that you can't paint. Like you have to use physical items that you find and it really creates another depth for my, for my art. Um, it gives it texture. If the person is a little bit more edgy or contemporary or reserved, um, it's really what I want to convey from their personality. So for example, I have uh, like a Danny Brown piece and he's really like wild and you know, Detroit and edgy. And so I used a lot of uh, collage and spray paint to build up the background of that piece, but the foundation is uh, oil paint for the actual figure. Abe Lincoln is one of my most iconic pieces that I've done. I thought he was just a really interesting guy because he was a boxer and you know he's all these crazy things that no one would ever know about him so when I did my research about him all you could find are black and white photos and I wanted to bring that to modern day so you have to add color put them out of context sort of like in modern day and what I did for my first rendition of him was put him like in front of a graffiti wall that's at four score and he's like taking a picture of himself with like a 35 millimeter camera and he has like a tuxedo on. It was just made like him as a character that brought him to life. And I've since then, like I've done uh, several murals of him actually with these kaleidoscope glasses that I think are just pretty cool. And it sort of just makes him like a, like an icon of today instead of just being stale in history. I use a lot of like, color and, and movement to try to capture you as long as possible and maybe put like a little bit of details that hidden things that you may not see until you look at it for maybe like the fifth time. And my, my pieces are very diverse and they can be placed anywhere. They can be placed in a home or in a restaurant or, you know, for any, any particular venue. So it's really interesting that you can find or learn something by looking at a piece of mine. I have a Misty Copeland piece that I did. She's like a phenomenal person, and um, she's accomplished so many things and broken so many barriers. And so throughout her piece, I incorporated a lot of uh, like magazine covers and sort of iconic pieces out, like out of her timeline. And I chose this pose that was really sort of beautiful. Today I'm working on a Rob Zombie portrait is actually a part of a bigger project that I'm doing with a local restaurant, uh, Vegan, and I'm doing a series of uh, vegan musicians. It's in the early phases of painting. I do uh, multiple layers, like I first tone it with the brown and then I go back and add color. 
and I'm also working on uh, NWA piece, which I, I'm picking back up after, after a year of sitting it down. I had to really think about uh, what I wanted to do for the background and how I wanted to like capture their essence within the piece. Like if I wanted to do a little bit more graffiti, add a little bit more of uh, spray paint and collage to that piece. And this guy, Easy e he's like right in the center. Like he's sort of like in the forefront of this and these guys are behind him. So I wanna like highlight him, but also not have like the background overpower it is probably why I covered up a lot of this. It lends itself to being more of a quiet background because they're so in your face just with their, their gesture, their look. The phrases that I typically use uh, for a portrait are uh, song lyrics from that musician themselves, maybe uh, movies that they uh, were in. If it's something we're closer to home, like uh, like a Danny Brown, I did do a bunch of like Detroit streets in the background, uh, like a Welcome Detroit uh, City Limit sign. Whatever that's per pertaining to that subject, um, I would include. And a lot of like artifacts, like actual like albums and included that part of the piece. My message is all about telling the stories of iconic figures, historical figures. The way that I, I capture them can be placed in any setting, really, and spark a conversation. I'm loving all of Desiree's paintings, especially that NWA piece. Major props, Miss Kelly.